Let's begin. My name is Jelena Karapetrovic. And uh, I will talk today about what is HPC, what is discovery, and what are the benefits of using it. And basically, what services we offer, how you can use, and how to uh, make your research efforts easier. So, um, the first thing is uh, we're from Cyber Infrastructure Architect team. We offer many services that I will talk about later. Uh, but, uh, Almost everything is related to the supercomputer discovery that is located at NMSU. Uh, that is located at NMSU. It's completely free for students, faculty, and staff. And I want to show you today how the entire process works, how to request an account, what you can do with that. Why is, why is it better to work on a supercomputer than working uh, on your personal computer. So first purpose and characteristics of supercomputers. So what is a supercomputer? It is a high level performance computer uh, when you compare it to your desktop uh, computer. So these are used, supercomputers are used for computationally intensive tasks. And you can use it in various fields. Uh, you can use it for quantum mechanics, weather forecasting, climate research, molecular modeling, physical uh, simulations, and so on. But mostly, if uh, your desktop computer requires, for example, months, for some analysis, you should definitely consider using something more powerful, like a supercomputer. So supercomputers were first introduced 60 years ago, like in 1960s, and current leaders in this field are China, Japan, and USA. So you have uh, resources available, you just need to use them. Uh, one thing that is specific for supercomputers is that they use operating system Linux. So most of us might be uh, already used to work, working on Windows or on Mac, but uh, supercomputers need you to learn basics of operating system Linux and how to use command line. But don't worry, uh, we did a survey uh, two years ago or a year ago, uh, that said that uh, over 50% of our users didn't know how to never use Linux in their life before they realized they need discovery, before they realized they need a supercomputer. And over 90% never use supercomputers. So uh, if you need it, you will be okay because we offer uh, very, good support and we have courses for everything. Short courses, but enough to get you started and enough for you to start using a supercomputer. So what is the difference between your local computer and supercomputers? For example, we have a table here. For example, your local desktop might have four cores, but supercomputers discovery specifically has hundreds of them almost a thousand. Uh, Exceed, Exceed is a regional supercomputer, more powerful than Discovery, and it has thousands already. Also, supercomputers have more memory, more storage, uh, but uh, there is one thing, there is one thing uh, different, so time limit. You can use your computer whenever you want and however you want. There is no time limit. And, uh, but for supercomputers, for example, for discovery, since there are different users who have some needs, we have to satisfy all of them. 
So you might need to wait and you might get only a limited time to complete your analysis. For regional resources like Exceed, uh, you, will get, you will get much shorter time limit. However, the benefit of using discovery is that you have assistance that is local. Uh, so everything is at an, at an MSU and especially during COVID, we, uh, we are doing everything online. There, there is very devoted assistance for anything you need which is not something that you could get when using Exceed. So a supercomputer is actually a cluster of computers. And you can take advantage of the cluster even better if, if you're running your jobs in parallel or in series. And this, in this way, you could save even more time. For example, if uh, your analysis requires some months on your local computer, on supercomputer it could take days. But if you optimize your code and run your separate tasks in parallel or in series, you, can, you could complete it even faster. So let's use, you can see a picture here. So this woman uh, is holding, looking at her phone, writing something and drinking something. So she's doing several things at the same time, meaning she's doing all these things in parallel. But if you want to use a real life example to see the difference between running jobs in series in parallel, uh, we can think about washing our clothes. Of course, if we have two loads of clothes, we could do it much faster if we uh, wash the second load while drying the first one, right? So that's running things in parallel, doing it at the same time. Uh, so for example, I'm going back to the laundry, you have to wash it, dry it, then fold it. And doing these things sequentially means you're doing it in series, one after another. So if we go, back to the cluster or a supercomputer, let's assume that you need to complete step one and step two of your experiment before you continue with step three. This means that step one and step two can be done in parallel, and then these two steps are in series with step three. Also, if you simply do control shift escape, for example, so these are all the processes that my computer is currently running. These jobs are run, run in parallel. So what resources does Discovery have? And why would we need, to need them? So as research problems often outgrow the desktop or laptop computers, uh, Discovery might be just the right thing for that because it can solve problems much faster or treat larger problems. So discovery as a high performance computer cluster is actually a collection of computers or nodes that are working together. They're communicating and attacking the same problem from multiple sides. It currently has 968 cores, so almost a thousand cores, which are used to process, store, and analyze massive amounts of data. But although HPC systems often have powerful processors, more memory, more storage, the real power comes from using the resources in parallel. So here also you have. Uh, some default amount of storage per user, 250 gigabytes, uh, of course, it is possible to request more, and I will talk about it later. Also, there are dedicated GPUs, meaning graphics processing units. These graphics processing units are specialized to rapidly manipulate uh, 
images and are very uh, efficient in computer graphics and image processing. So you can use that also. Another thing we have oops, is a project space. What is a project space? Uh, it is designed to be a group space where lab members can share files, collaborate. Uh, they don't need to duplicate files, upload the same large files multiple times. So uh, at the moment, the project space has at least 250 gigabytes of free storage with the ability to increase it at a minimal cost. So discovery can perform more operations than your local computer and can do it much faster. Uh, it also grows steadily and quickly. Uh, for example, we now have around a thousand cores, uh, which was not the case just three years ago. I think we had only half of that. So we're adding nodes all the time. We're adding new services, for example, project space. Uh, exists only for a year or two. Also, aside from being able to get research results faster, there is help available right on campus and, of course, now online. So, uh, what can we help you with? with? Adapting your code, with job submission, meaning your analysis submission. Uh, how to use the scheduler. We will talk about the scheduler later because we have more users, right? And we want all of them to complete their tasks, to um, optimize everything. So that's why we're using scheduler. I want to show you um, a website. If you just Google HPC NMSU, this is our page. And uh, you can get many information here. Even our workshops, you were re redirected here when you needed to register. Also, all, uh, all of the recordings will be posted here. So you can go back later if you want to, or if you weren't able to attend. Uh, so here we have requests. We have account requests, software, project space, storage requests. And let's go to account request because all of these forms are very similar uh, and very short. We need your name, your email address, your department, and your research description. There is one important part about creating a discovery account because you need an account in order to use it, right? Uh, the important thing is that uh, sensitive or regulated data cannot be stored here because we are not responsible for that. So make sure that you follow these guidelines. Also for storage, additional storage requests, Again, we would fill in the form uh, for project space request. If you, if you run a lab or something like that, that's the project space is a good way to organize everything and to collaborate with your team. So now, As also, there is another website with more detailed explanations uh, that is also online, HPC Wiki page. Uh, it has more details about FATI and other useful applications that so, so your work is much easier. Also, how to use discovery and everything. Okay. okay. 
So what is a slur what is slurm? So what uh, modern cluster systems often incorporate a very important concept, and that is job scheduler, a scheduling system. The functional purpose of the scheduling system is to eliminate the need to know what individual computers are doing. Remember, the supercomp a supercomputer is a cluster of computers. So we don't care what each computer is doing. We want our job to be completed. So it aggregates data and monitors the system. It keeps an accurate and up-to-date picture of what resources are available and where. And beyond tracking resources, a scheduler will allow you to submit instructions for running your job and then run your program on your behalf once the necessary resources are available. This means that uh, you can submit your job on a Friday and go on a small vacation. And after that, uh, you can go back. All, you don't have to recheck and resubmit. Every, you, you submit it only once. And Slurm is the one who will decide when to run it. And it will run it as soon as the resources are available. So when, you, when you're back from your holiday on Monday, uh, your job might be already done completed. So Slurm is installed in many of the top 500 supercomputers. Very useful thing. And if, if you want a better explanation, Slurm is like a restaurant hostess. So if you come to a restaurant with two friends and you need a table for three, uh, the hostess might tell you to wait a little because she only has one table with two chairs. And as soon as it's available, you will be seated. Similarly, if you request three nodes on a supercomputer and only two are available, you might need to wait until all three are available because we don't want to wait to leave one of the friends waiting, right? So this is why it's important to request resources from Slurm wisely. Also, fairness. We have a fairness here. The important thing about Slurm is that it is fair. So we have a large community at NMSU, many researchers and many people using the supercomputer. But it will be fair. If you need, a, for example, you, you log in now and uh, submit a job that takes an, a one hour, and this is your first time, you will definitely uh, get a space. You, you could be prioritized. However, if you're using discovery every day, 24 hours a day, uh, you will not be the first person in line because people who need less resources um, or rarely will, uh, will be served first because we want to be fair. We want everyone to get an opportunity to complete their jobs faster. I think we had a question. Yeah, I have answered that, Elena. You can Perfect, go. thank you. Yeah. So uh, we want to talk about how to access the discovery. So the first step that you want to do is request an account. And I'm going back uh, to our web page. And here in the request, you will see account request. You will fill this in and immediately you will get an email asking you uh, to enter a Canvas course. This is a Canvas course. It consists of five modules and you will need to go through it uh, to read everything. It takes maybe an hour or two in total. So after that, even if you don't know anything in advance. So first part is introduction to Linux. It will teach you the basic commands, how to navigate it, how to list uh, the contents of your folder, how to copy, remove files, and so on. Just the basic things. Um, then it will teach you about supercomputing, about Slurm, how to actually schedule a job. 
the changes we make are in module three. And finally, in module file five, you will see how to access discovery. Okay, it says here Joker, that's the old name. So now it's, it's discovery. So uh, as soon as you go through these five modules, you will have some tests, uh, short, simple, multiple choice tests, just so we know that you read everything, that you, for example, agreed not to store sensitive data, and that you know how to navigate the command line, the basics. So after you do that, you would need to send an email to HPC at NMSUEDU. You will see that email also later. But after you do that, you will get access to discovery. And then after you get access, uh, you can log in and run your jobs. I have everything installed now. All of these are detailed uh, in Canvas. We also have videos that will show you exactly what to click and how to install things. So here, uh, since we're, we're working online, everything, we're usually off campus. So that's why the first thing we need to do is connect to the VPN. So a VPN actually makes your computer access the internet and it, it is first routing it through another network. So basically you are routing your connection through NMSU. And I will connect now. Okay, I'm already connected. Uh, VPN. So the second part is, we would open Patty and log in to Discovery. Our host name is discovery.nmsu.edu. And then you log in with your MyNMSU credentials. So no need to memorize any new password or anything. It's very straightforward. So this is the command line. This is how you would be working in Discovery. Another thing uh, I want to show you is Win SCP. Okay, it's open already. This is a very small program that also, let me close it. I want to show you how to enter it. So again, discovery.nmsu.edu. And then your NMSU credentials. Okay. And um, it will list everything that is on your command line. You see here I have uh, the alphabet two tree. Okay, here it is. Some text files. And I have many folders. So every, if you're a Windows user, this might be very practical for you. It's also a good way for moving your files, copying them and moving them to another place, pasting them. So for example, if I want uh, to copy this file or open it, I can simply drag it to my desktop. So this stands even for large files, you can use Win SCP to move your files however you want, or copy them, or delete them, or anything. So it's it makes it even easier. So Win SCP is actually uh, stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol for Windows Secure Copy. So it it enables secure file transfer between networked hosts. And when you have VPN, PATI, and Win SCP, you have all the resources that you need to access discovery. So this, this is what supercomputer, this is how discovery looks like 
inside. This is your computer, your computer that is now at home, for example, and you will log in. I just logged in here with my credentials. So I'm here and all your jobs are run on compute nodes. You don't even need to know what is going on. You just need to know your results. And Slurm is the one that will distribute your tasks across compute nodes. And you will need to know how to do it. And this Canvas course and additional help is there to help you with that. So after you ac access uh, Discovery and the next thing is that you need to select which software you need. So let's try that. Which software are available? Short for available, avail. Okay, so starting here, uh, you will also see D in brackets. That's the default version. And see how many different software are here. For example, if we want to work in Python, we would type module spider Python to list versions that we have. Here are the versions that we have. Uh, and if you want to, for example, see more about this particular version, we will get instructions how to load it. So just simply do this module list. And here is the list of currently loaded modules. It's inside. So modules represent interface to different software packages. And it changes your environment to include the path to software and making it available to you. So uh, it allows you to keep a co copy of the chosen software without needing additional storage. You don't need to download, install anything. I just had to download and install MATLAB, new MATLAB, and a couple of days ago, and it takes about an hour. So in this way, you can do it in a second. No need, you just plug and play with different software applications and different versions that you actually need. And it makes it easier to main several versions of the same software and avoiding inter inter interference between similar components. So all you have to think about is what software do you need, which version, and then you simply load that software. However, if the software that you want is not available, is not on this list, you simply make a software request fill it in, the details about the software that you need, software website, what you need it for, and that's it. We will do our best to make that version or that software available as soon as possible. Also, some other services that, uh, for example, you can submit, that we offer, you can submit your jobs on AggieGrid cluster. Uh, we are a contact point for getting registered for using Open Science Grid, besides offering high speed storage, high speed networking. We offer installation and support with software. Uh, usage consulting for discovery, and we're also a contact point for regional resources. So if you need more powerful computers, supercomputers, uh, you should contact us. 
And here are the information about everything, our email address and the website that can be very useful. I want to talk about one more thing, and that's investing in discovery. For example, if you're applying for a grant and uh, your proposal requires uh, extensive computational resources, uh, discovery is an excellent choice. Why? Because you have uh, because you have, uh, you can purchase it and then you have administration managers, administrators that will uh, maintain and do everything needed for your compute notes, for your purchased compute notes. And here, this is grant specific language. You would actually only need this text and actually, um, People who decide on if you get a grant or not actually uh, like seeing, in our experience, like seeing a supercomputer being used. Because besides, for example, here, you would need two nodes to purchase two nodes. And then these uh, two nodes are available to you uh, for next five years. That means we were talking about fairness of SLURM but these two nodes are yours. So whenever you want to use it, you have the priority. But besides these two nodes, you can use all other nodes if they're available at the same time. Uh, however, if you are on, the, on that holiday that we were talking about, but without working on your nodes, uh, other users, other NMSU researchers can use your nodes. And you don't need to worry about um, if everything functions properly of, or if anything needs to be changed. So it's a recommendation for using it in your grants. So the first thing that you would want to do is to request an account and go into the process. The rest is uh, explained in details in Canvas course and also our uh, email address and website offer many valuable information. So I would like to hear questions now. And we have even people who are very technical and can answer more specific questions if you have those. So please ask. Um, I do have a question. Um, can we request any kind of software, let's say SolidWorks, to run simulations? Well, I don't know about that specific software, but the first step would be would be to complete this software request. Okay. And then someone will contact you. Uh, they will check licenses, check everything. Is is the license? needed or no, uh, even contact the people who, who sell, you know, you will be helped, that's for sure. I don't know about the specific software. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, I was just curious, um, would it be reasonable for a supercomputer to be used as a server, such as maybe a web server of some kind? Mm, Valentine, can you answer this, please? Yeah, so um, what exactly are you trying to achieve? And I can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, a little bit better, yes. Okay, so what exactly are you trying to achieve with a, with a web server? Um, are you trying to run um, like a Jupyter notebook on it or what? Like, is it like, would it be like, like what I'm trying to ask is like, would it be completely reasonable for like um, supercomputers to be used as servers, like at a, like, would it be reliable? Would, would, a, would a supercomputer be reliable enough to run as a, on, on different types as a server of some kind? Since, you know, everything runs, since everything runs on a bunch of nodes and it's not really all one giant computer. It's like multiple computers that runs as one. 
Um, so yes, yes, it is possible, right? But think about it this way. Uh, we have several compute nodes that you could use to um, submit, let's say, um, jobs that you're trying to run on the compute nodes, right? So having a web server, it depends on if you're trying to um, access the web server from your own computer. I don't know if that makes sense. So, um, because recently um, we did like a test where we could use like Jupyter Notebook on the compute nodes. But basically you're using the web interface to submit your job to the compute nodes. So that's that's what I know um, we have working right now, if that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I am, uh, um, I, I want to know the, in your, uh, in, in, in your, uh, in your uh, FPC system, uh, do you have a kind of uh, module or software support for uh, containerization like uh, Kubernetes or Docker? Do, 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 do you have? Uh, um, I am not sure about that. I don't think we have that, but I can relay your question at the end of this workshop to um, our technical guy, and I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you know the uh, uh, settings and uh, uh, job something because uh, my my work is uh, the workspace is have a lot of software and the the the, the uh, uh, program I wrote and it. Uh, connect with together and work in term of cluster and I want to deploy it easily and I think uh, if your APC system supports uh, some kind of containerization uh, uh, like uh, Docker or Kubernetes is very, very good. Okay, so basically you have your um, project um, in containers, right? And you're trying to move that container to HPC to see if it could be processed. Like you, you're trying to move the container to the compute nodes, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, for example, okay. if, uh, uh, for example, if I want to deploy a cluster, a Spark, Apache Spark cluster yeah. into uh, FPC system, you mean, I, I know in your, I think in your system, uh, you, you already have some modern support Spark and already yeah. in tones, but uh, you know, Actually, uh, I have my own configuration for my cluster, and is if uh, I can deploy uh, my my system in term of uh, uh, containers. Containers is very easy to me. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. If your system support it, it's very good. Okay. Um. I'll I'll find that out. I'll find yeah. that out from the okay. technical guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the, Thanks for that, though. Yeah.